Good morning, everybody, and welcome uh, both to uh, St. Mark's as the place and space they're in. Good morning, and welcome to all of those of you who are streaming with us. Uh, what a treat it is for us today on so, so many fronts, one of which uh, you have just heard. We have Christopher Houlihan with us. Christopher is a, uh, a, a colleague of the maestros and worked with the maestro at, uh, in Paris all so many years ago. And now he is a brilliant organist in his own right and works at Trinity College. Many of you are graduates of Trinity College. And uh, yes, exactly, right in the front row, no less. Uh, and Christopher is going to be here today and for Evensong also. So this, as you know, is, and you can see, uh, a day of baptisms for us. It is the celebration of All Saints. All Saints Day, of course, being on November 1st, and we transfer it uh, to the Sunday following because it is a major feast day for us. And, and as part of the, the fullness of All Saints, we are going to read uh, with great solemnity the names of those who are loved and we have lost. Uh, and also, we are gonna baptize into life all those who are gathered here in front of us. So uh, you can tell also that it is a feast day because in a little bit you're gonna be absolutely delighted with what I would bet is amongst the top three favorite hymns of everybody in the Episcopal Church. So let's, let's dawdle no longer. So if you would stand, let us sing together uh, for all the saints. It's in your order of service.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for all those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See? The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me. 
But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of Lazarus being raised from the dead reminds me of something Woody Allen once said. I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. <laughs> Lazarus is kind of a straw dog in the Gospel of John. His character is there for Jesus to perform this astounding and essential sign of his identity and power. But we don't hear a word about how this experience impacted Lazarus' second shot at life. There's no ancient equivalent of an Oprah special or an Anderson Cooper interview to tell us what became of him after his passage through death, four days in the grave, and back into life. But that's not the point. This is a story about Jesus and resurrection. It's a story of Jesus redefining resurrection as something different than the standard theological teaching of his day, which his friends Mary and Martha and many of their contemporaries readily believed, namely that resurrection would happen in a future time. Graves would literally open at the last day once the world was put right and, is, and God's kingdom was restored to earth and Israel could live in peace. Not all Jews believed this, but it was a prominent line of thinking in the Hebrew tradition. And it's not so different from the general idea that most forms of Christianity have perpetuated, that resurrection for us will be in some future time, at the last day, into a place of eternal bliss. In the scene before this one, Jesus promises Lazarus would rise again, and Martha affirms his promise, saying that yes, she believed her brother would rise again on the last day. She answers like a model student of the Jewish catechism. But Jesus offers Mary and Martha a chance to take a leap from their theology to their faith. The writer Robert Farrer Capon said this was a leap from resurrection in the future to resurrection now, to resurrection as the fundamental mystery of creation finally manifest in Jesus' own flesh. Jesus says earlier, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Capon again says, Jesus never meets a corpse that doesn't sit up right on the spot. In Luke, there's the widow of Nain's son, and Jairus' daughter, and now Lazarus. And they rise not because Jesus works some magic on them, but simply because he has that effect on the dead. They rise because he is the resurrection, even before he himself rises. Because in other words, he is the grand sacrament the real presence of a mystery of a kingdom in which everybody rises. In baptism, we practice passing through death all the way to resurrection so that we can build the courage to practice it in our daily lives. At baptism, we renounce the forces of evil that seek to corrupt and destroy God's creation and creatures. We renounce all that draws us away from the love of God. We turn towards Jesus Christ and follow him into a path where we participate in his kingdom, in which everyone rises, 
and none are sacrificed as collateral damage for someone else's narrow vision of power and domination. We follow Jesus into a path of resurrection in which we strive for justice and peace and love of neighbor and respect for the dignity of every human person. These are daily choices we are given to make. We find it easier to imagine a world in which justice prevails, all have enough, and nations live at peace with one another, as a world in a future beyond our lifetimes, the way Martha and Mary thought of resurrection. But in baptism, we are challenged to take our own leap from theology to faith and participate in the here and now in God's kingdom where everybody rises. This is the life of a baptized Christian. We are citizens of the kingdom of God that is present and active and urgent, especially amidst the violence and injustices of our time. Jesus is the resurrection and the life in us when we take stands for the resurrection of the world, of the creation, the resurrection of our nation, the resurrection of our own friends and families and communities. Resurrection is not only something that happens to us, but also a verb we participate in when we draw upon the love and power of God who raised Jesus from the dead, who raised Lazarus from the dead, and who raises us right here and now from our own dead places that need a tombstone rolled away. In our culture, we spend a lot of time trying to achieve immortality through not dying from potions and pills and foods and exercises that would keep us young and forestall death, to artificial intelligence that offers whiz-bang promises that one day we might cure aging itself, and it offers us full access to knowledge in every field. We mistake eternal life for the achievement of not dying. Though we strive to live forever, we struggle to truly live. For all our human progress, we are sorely lacking in, humanit in humanitarian progress. Artificial intelligence might extend our lives and make us more productive and intelligent. But so far, enlightenment is a flesh and blood, heart and will project for the spiritual life of individual humans. I have a friend and fellow priest named Mary Haddad who quipped, there is no such thing as artificial enlightenment. When we give the newly baptized, which we will shortly, when we give them a candle after their water baptism, we say to them, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The light of Christ is the source of our enlightenment, our inner transformation. The light of Christ is the source of our good works. It's the clarity that illuminates our daily path as we follow the way of Jesus. No amount of AI and no medical breakthrough, no election, and certainly no politician can save us from the need to do our own inner work of becoming more enlightened, more like Jesus. Take this year's presidential election campaign in which the last day to vote, mercifully, is finally upon us on Tuesday. And with an election as close as this one is, where it really could go either way, we can bet on the fact that just about every other person around you, as many as one out of every two people, even here in these pews today, disagrees with you. Our work is not to root out our opponents and expel them from our lives. It is not to regard one another with suspicion. Our work is to embrace one another in all of our shared humanity and complexities, to listen to one another, to presume each other's good intentions and desire for truth, even when we feel incredulous. Our work is to love one another into friendship in which we each navigate life's challenges together. If love is our aim, Eventually, our paths will move in the same direction. 
Our work is to roll the stone away from the tombs of condemnation and cancellation we so easily bury each other in. Our work is to unbind one another from our tribal categories and labels and let each other go in love. Reconciling with one another will always be hard work and there will always be more to do. But to follow the way of Jesus is to do the work of reconciliation daily, one difficult relationship at a time. In today's social and political climate, this kind of work sounds just as impossible as it must have sounded to Martha that Jesus would raise her brother from the dead. Martha needed to take a leap of faith, but the miracle was not hers to perform. That was up to Jesus. It takes work and it takes a leap of faith to believe that we can bring life back to our planet, to our warring world, to our divided nation, to our poor and to our vulnerable, to ourselves as we suffer our own profound anxieties. But as people of the resurrection life, we have every reason to believe these things are not only possible, but already underway. For our part, we have choices to make that favor justice and peace, choices that serve the common good, and choices that respect the dignity of every human person. This is our work to do for the resurrection of the world around us. The miracles are Jesus's to perform. He is the resurrection and the life. This is God's kingdom. We are just living in it. Let us live as citizens who participate in that kingdom so that all may rise. Amen. So the liturgy of baptism follows, and it's a liturgy means work of the people, and it's a team sport, and you all have a part in it. And so I'd love it if you would begin to turn to page three in your order of service. And if the families during the singing of the hymn would come up and find your spot. And I might also note in the hymn that we're about to sing, uh, it is written, as you can see, in this small little print at the bottom there, Lesbia Scott. She was a hymn writer. She had little kids. She found herself sitting in the nursery playroom of her house. All Saints Day was coming, and she wrote this for her children. And so today, we sing this hymn for all the children who are about to be baptized. So let us sing, uh, stand and sing, I sing a song to the saints of God.
Would the congregation please be seated? The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Wonderful, thank you. Oh my gosh, I was wondering where this was. Okay, I was like, we were lost. Okay, thank you, yes. James is seven and is going to be baptized. And so James, do you desire to be baptized? I do, wonderful. Now this is for everybody. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? And will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? And for the children you present, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? And do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? You renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God. And for the children you present, do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And now this is for all of us together. Will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? So let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? And will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? And will you persevere in resisting evil? Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. And will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? So let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, 
may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Christ received the baptism of John, was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, may all honor and glory be now and forever. Amen. James, James, I baptize you. Why don't you lean over here? There we go. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. James, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Name this child. Hamilton. Hi, Georgiana. <laughs> Georgiana, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Georgiana, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Name this child. Amelia Holland, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amelia Holland, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Amelia, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Name this child. Hi, Trevor. Trevor and I have been in a wedding together. How's that? 
Trevor. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Trevor, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Trevor, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Name this child. Rory, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rory, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Rory, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Name this child. Scott Howard Dunlap. Scott Howard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You are anointed by the Holy Spirit oil and marked as Christ's own forever. <laughs> Receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Name this child. Please, do you want to come with me? I'm going to stay with your mom. <laughs> Reese, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Reese, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Name this child. John Jay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. John Jay, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. John Jay, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Name this child. Yes, come reach in. Vivian, lean right into this, okay? Right into this. 
go for a swim. <laughs> Vivian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Put that on your forehead. Put that on your forehead. There we go. You are anointed with the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever, and that's for sure. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Vivian, receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Let's get it over there. Name this child? Henry Duffield. Henry? Henry, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Henry, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Henry, Receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Now, together, I want us to pray together. So you see this is at the bottom of page six of your order of service. And this is prayer for the seven fruits of the Spirit. We're gonna say that and then we're gonna move right on into welcoming everybody into the household of God. So you see where I am, the bottom of page six. Together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy in all your works. Amen. And now let us welcome the newly baptized as we say together, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us his an eternal priesthood. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one the sign of the Lord's peace in our lives. You can blow out the candles. Hi, oh, it's so sweet. You can blow it out if you want to. But did you get a box to put it in? I think she's passing one around, so. Okay, congratulations, that was so sweet. <laughs> yeah, thank you, that would be great. Yep. Uh, this was somebody's. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, just a uh, brief word about a few things in our community, and I want to say welcome again, and welcome in particular to the families who are uh, here for their loved ones, for their baptism, 
and welcome to those who are streaming. As you may or may not know, for those of you who are here, there are many people in our congregation and beyond uh, in the United States and few in the world who stream with us, and many of the families who couldn't be here, extended family, are streaming with us this morning, and we welcome you. I, I want to say again uh, what a delight it is uh, for us to welcome Christopher Houlihan uh, as our organist. I made a word about him as we started, and Christopher, a, a longtime colleague of Ned's, and, and thank you for being with us. Uh, also, in, in other news, uh, some of you may have caught this, but you might have to be on the varsity Episcopal team. Uh, yesterday, uh, a new presiding bishop in the Episcopal Church was instituted, uh, Right Reverend Sean Rowe, uh, and if there was ever uh, a man for the right season, he is the man for the right season. Uh, and we're really blessed to have Sean and our prayers are with and for Sean. Uh, just a word about life after church here this morning, uh, the world's greatest coffee hour, of course, and I invite you all, and I invite you all to speak with somebody you do not know because that's how we make communion with one another and Jesus ate with people and we do the same. Uh, to note also that at the coffee hour, you can make your pledge to the life of our community and we are grateful to all of those of you who have made a pledge and grateful to all of you who are about to pledge. Also at 11.30, uh, along those lines, Reverend Elizabeth and I will be in the library to speak with anybody about any topic, but in particular, uh, if you have questions about uh, anything to do with the pledge campaign or anything to do with the parish, we'd like to sit with you uh, and speak with you. And at 11.30, Father John is going to be uh, with confirmation. As so many of you know, at five o'clock today, as is our custom uh, on All Saints, we're going to have an even song in celebration of all saints and all souls. This in particular for loved ones who we've lost during the past year. Uh, and this time uh, in particular, we're going to pray and sing uh, in loving memory for uh, Dean Willis, who three weeks ago was here in our pulpit uh, and still shockingly uh, uh, died two days later. I was texting with uh, Fletcher, his, his longtime companion, uh, yesterday, and Fletcher is broken hearted. I mean, when I, after I read the text, I couldn't speak for about an hour afterward. Uh, and so our prayers are for Fletcher as well. So uh, again tonight, Ned, the choir, and Christopher Houlihan, the Friends of Music, please come and be a part of that. And then Monday nights, many of you have discovered the treasure that is Monday night at seven o'clock in our library with Father John and his wife, Emma uh, McDonald, and their, their Mondays with Merton. And then next week, just to say, nine o'clock, newcomers class, and then 11.30, a civil rights forum. I mentioned after uh, we got back from our civil rights forum, what an unbelievably, wildly enriching time it was for the 10 of us who were on the pilgrimage, and we would like to share that with you. And so I hope you'll come and be a part of that conversation. Now, just a word about Holy Communion. We'll have Holy Communion, uh, uh, standing stations along the wall, along the stained glass, and two rows down here. We invite everybody who is here to come and participate in the bread and wine of holy life. Now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
We pray for those whose lives are lost to us, for those who have died, particularly those who have died during the past year. Mary Aldrich, Peggy Jean Atherton, Peter Battaglia, Jim Beardsley, Charles E. Bell, Edward Paul Bennett, Martha Bernhardt, Jeremy Betridge, Kenneth Byer, Adam Boaz, Lee Bounton, Lawrence Joseph Buse, Raymond Burnett, Milton Campbell, Jennifer Cardinal, Arthur Donald Chase, J. Joseph Clark, Roberta Lamp Clure, Elaine Condon, Emile Coulon, Anne Thorndike Cover, Charles E. Crookenden, Tom Kirchin, Suzanne Dowling, Noah Detchmendy, Shelley Dinan, Barbara Dowd, Therese Martin Egan, Clancy Fauntleroy, Robert Archer Fearon, Adam Fuster, Richard Fincher, Brian Finnerty, Jeremy Fordham, Hillary Fraser Thompson, Jay Garland, Susan Jane Gima, Anne Kirsten Gorham, the Right Reverend Richard F. Grine, Cleet Harrison, Nancy Haynes, Ansley Heap, William Hine, Charlie Hopkins, Don Hopkins, James Bickford Herlock III, Mary Inagami, Patricia Jones, Michael Jordan, Elliot Kropp, Harvey Lapin, Priscilla Dudley Le Bourgeois, Lee, David Levine, David Lotterick, Patricia McCary, Gloria Major Brown, Paul Marchese, Bishop Paul Marshall, Father Richard Mayberry, Cornelius Connie McCarthy, Lisbeth McCoy, Tony McMahon, Jed Mellick, Rebecca Davies Morton, Midge Murphy, Derek Nolan, Will Norton, Claire Pallas, William Palmer, Jack Barry Parker, John Pat, Michelle Perrin Percy, Bob Perkins, Gerhardt Cookie Ristow, Eleanor Gamble Perkins Robinson, June Rogers, Martha Rotan Terry, Carol Selden, Steve Smith, Francisco Staffanel, Debbie Sutherland, Charlene Terrell, 
Mary Duncan Thompson, Dwayne Thorsheim, Judith Van Zahn, Danielle Vida, Barbara Wagner, Nancy Widinger, Sarah Welmsford, Melissa Weatherfield, Richard White, James White, Katina Williams, the very Reverend Dr. Robert Willis, David Wynn, Patricia Ann Winsauer, Rudolph Wolf, Mary Norris Worth, and Richard Young. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpet shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And now may the peace, uh, and now the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, it is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him, and sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be done. I will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. 
Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And now may you all take a very deep breath, breathe out and then breathe in and breathe out and then breathe in. Regardless of what happens in the world, the Spirit of the Lord is embedded in your souls and now 10 more have come to the way of love. And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and be with you forever. Go and make disciples who live a deeper life in Christ a more holy communion with one another for the world.